Carl Albert, Midwest City, and Dell City. When high school football is talked about in the state of Oklahoma, it usually doesn't take long for the Titans, Bombers, and Eagles to be mentioned among the very best. A happy Saturday good morning as we welcome you to the Middell High School Football Wrap-Up on your high school sports Saturday morning leader, 1340 The Game. Every show in this special 13-week series is made possible by Physical Therapy Central, providing sideline help and beyond for Middell sports. By the Hudeberg Auto Group, a Middell Athletics friend for decades. And by Rose State College, the next step for you after your Middell experience. Now to find out what happened under those Friday night lights, let's join your hosts, Middell Athletic Director Andy Collier, PC Athletic Director Dick Balancifan, and longtime Hall of Fame sportscaster John Brooks. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome aboard to our second edition of the Middell Football Wrap-Up. Andy's sitting to my left. To my right is a guy who apparently, Andy, came off injured reserve. I, I just think he didn't want to show. But <laughs> right, For the opener last week, right? Yes, that's he did right. not want to show. Uh, he allegedly had uh, knee surgery, of all things, okay? He's so walking great. He's, he's, walk, he's, he's walking great uh, on the show that follows us when I'll, I'll try to find out from him exactly why he's walking great but we're not going to give him any extra time on this show other than what is absolutely necessary however dick balancefen it's nice to see you welcome aboard you back as our uh, as our three-way partnership now uh glad to be here it's always great to be with you john and andy is a great friend of mine and so we're i'm very excited uh i'll ask this question before we get into last night's action boy there's lots of things that happened in the Middale sports picture last night. And for Andy, as the athletic director of all the schools, it's always tough. Same thing uh, that uh, Dick uh, experienced last night in Putnam City. When you've got teams playing against each other uh, within your own district, it's always tough. Uh, You don't know what to do. And, of course, you were, uh, you know, an an alum of Midwest City. So it was kind of a different situation. So let's start with the Carl Albert Midwest City game last night. Before we do... We need to let everybody know that, and we thank you, because the response, Andy called me an hour and a half after our opening show and said, you won't believe. Tell us what happened after the show. Hey, we got good Middell people listening, and and that's always always important. Uh, They care about our communities. They care about our programs, and it it showed last week. So viewership was up, and it's only going to get better. Now, we are going to have, uh, we were unable last week for them, anybody that missed the show that won it. That's not going to be the case from now on. We now have that covered. That's and, right. And, we're, we're gonna, and if you miss this show or you want to hear it again, here's what you're going to have to do. We're going to post the show every week um, on my website at middell.net. And um, you're going to be able to, to hear it throughout the week. It'll be up on Monday morning, every Monday morning. And so... Um, for those that did get up early on a Saturday morning, and you're or you're going to tailgate at OU, right. uh, whatever it might be, you're going to be able to uh, go back every week and listen to the show. So it will be available on Monday morning. Monday morning on the website on the okay. district okay. website. That, that'll be good. So you can pass that along. I know some of you uh, have, have definitely had that. All right, let's get down to the action of last night. First of all, very quickly, and we'll get to this game later. Great win for Dell City. They go on the road at Booker T. Washington and get a three touchdown victory at twenty-seven to six. Just a quick thought from you, and then we're going to talk about that Midwest City Carl Albert battle. They're good. I mean, Dell City's the team to beat in 5A. I'm not afraid to say it. Yeah. Um, I, I, the kids are playing hard. It was an ugly win. Um, I, the beauty of technology, I can watch that game on the Internet as I'm at another game. Sure. Um, defense played stellar. Special teams played stellar. And they still have not put together four quarters. That's what's scary. They went in and beat the number one team in the state last night in Booker T in 6A2. Last week, took down the number three team in Choctaw in 6A2. So, um, Coach Jones has got it rolling. Yeah, he does. Now, you said it was an ugly win. Yeah. I just don't think they were gelling as much as they were last week. Oh, but they okay. pick it up in a, a, another area. You know, it's a, it's a three-phase game, and they still, I guess, first Choctaw, they were offensive oriented. Right. This um, way they were defensive, That's obviously. right. Th- this week, it, it was defense and special teams. So, they still have not put together all three phases. That's scary for the whole state of Oklahoma. All right, let's go to the Midwest City Carl Albert game. Carl Albert wins the game 39-25, to a, gro- a, a great, great rivalry between these two schools with in, incredible history, great programs. And Midwest City is off to a 19-7 to lead 
and uh, Carl Albert takes over. They got some help along the way. They did. Um, you know, it's a tough game to be at. Yeah, uh, sure it was. But I will tell you this, you, you, those games like that, stars come out to play. And you saw it last night. Midwest City, uh, DJ Irvin, he was unbelievable. A four-year starter quarterback for Midwest City. Um, he had 26 carries for 186 yards, three touchdowns uh, on the ground, and then another one through the air. He came to play. Um, Midwest City is very, very well coached and so much improved from what they were last year. Um, and, of course, they went back down to, to 5A. On the Carl Albert side, um, you're coming off an embarrassing loss. Yeah. Um, the kids went to work, and you could tell, and they decided to do what they do best, and that's run the ball. Um, Xavier Robinson, their big junior tailback, he had 30 carries for 264 yards, four touchdowns, um, and they fed him the rock in the second half. And like you said, the first half, it, 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 Midwest City's way, they came out, made adjustments at halftime, and, and decided to run north and south. Dick's eyebrows raised up pretty good when you gave that uh... – uh, that that uh, four touchdown package, yeah, pretty strong. Andy, you have it going on over there, and you guys are going to be extremely strong in five A. I I really think that you could have three in the semifinals. We're hoping, um, and like I said, you know, um, all three of them are rocking and rolling. But as I've said all all the time, as an AD, it's a marathon and it's not a sprint. There's a lot of things that can happen. Uh, they're going to have to stay healthy, and and these kids are going to have to learn. Even though that that. Some things are going right. Don't read your press clippings. You've got to get better every week. Yeah. Hey, uh, here's uh, – I mean, we're only doing the Metro here, but uh, here's uh, two other – or three other scores from 5A last night. McGinnis uh, defeats Clinton 46-14. to I don't know if that was a shock or not. I thought it might have been a little bit of a shock, at least the difference in the score. I see McGinnis every year. Uh, they're a, okay, a so you really good football shock. team. <laughs> but with the tradition rich program like Clinton – it, it kind exactly. of it kind of shocked me a little bit that the yeah. how big the scoring was yeah, last exactly. night. Unfortunately, I got to see McGinnis last week beat Pitt, Putnam City, and They're I got good. to watch it on video. Yeah. And they are solid, strong, and they they do things very well. Very fundamentally sound football team. Piedmont was a forty-two to winner at home against El Reno. Noble thirty-four to twenty-seven over Blanchard, and Guthrie just uh, romped uh, at Woodward fifty to nothing. All right. We have a guest coming up. We're going to take a quick break. But before we do, tell us a little bit. Because you know what? You talked about all these offensive packages and everything. Look over here, sitting to your left with a small little smile on his face. is one of those big defensive linemen and offensive linemen. Who's going to be our guest when we return? Tanner Norman. He's a junior at Carl Lauert, um, offense-defensive lineman. And like I said, you know, any time a tailback can rush – for 264 yards, it's because of those big hogs up Sure it was, yeah. And we'll get to uh, Tanner here in just a moment. Before we do, last week you did this. You did it again this week. You had offensive keys to success for Midwest City. You had Carl Albert, same thing, defensive keys. From the notes that you sent me, and I tried to, uh, you know, interpret them, but did everything play out about like you said last week? If you look at it, it, look, it, it never. It, it, and you, <laughs> if you look at it and understand it, right, Dick? Absolutely. <laughs> I will tell you this. It, it really did. If you look at Dell City, they contained Michael Teese last night. He's a commitment, uh, Arkansas commitment. Um, they mixed up their coverages. They put pressure on offensive line. Um, they really confused a good high school quarterback um, that this week got offered by Air Force, so he's a Division One quarterback, and they got they got really? to him. Yeah, they confused him with some blitz packages. They wrapped up and and they won the line of scrimmage, is what we always talk about in Mid Dell. Uh, um, from the other game, um, Carl Albert was able to basically get physical in the second half and control the tempo as well as the offense and defensive line. So yeah, it 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 always works out if you if you follow the game plan, you usually win. You know. Andy's excited, Dick, because he's now two for zero on, <laughs> on 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 his pregame notes. We'll see if he stays un, unbeaten throughout the year. But anyway, on pregame notes right now, Dick. Absolutely, at, there he is. He's he's staying. Uh, he's he's perfect at two and zero. Okay, we take a quick break. When we're back, we meet the guy that did all of that movement up front, both sides of the ball. That'll be Tanner Norman. He joins us on the Middale Football Wrap Up right after this. Ready to get back in the game? Great news. The movement experts at Physical Therapy Central can help you find relief and results to keep you off the sidelines with over 30 convenient locations across Oklahoma City and beyond. Contact PT Central today at ptcentral.org to see a physical therapist. 
Physical Therapy Central, a proud sponsor of Middell Athletics and trusted choice for keeping athletes and fans in the game. In the old days in these parts of Oklahoma, there was cattle rustling. Someone would take your cattle off your property, brand it as their own, sell them, and keep the cash for themselves. Now there is a good thing. Car and truck rustling is happening here and now in Wellston, Oklahoma, only at Hudeberg Ford. Hudeberg Ford will park your used car or truck in our pasture, sell it for you, and you keep the cash. X marks the spot at the Hudeberg Ford brand, where I-44 meets Old Route 66 in Wellston, Oklahoma. Or click HudebergFord.com and start building your Ford your way today. Welcome back. If you've just tuned in to 1340 AM, it is your high school football wrap-up later on Saturdays. Coming up after this show will be the Metro PC report. That will run from 9 to 10. We always precede that with our good buddy to our left, and that would be Athletic Director Andy Collier from Middell as he joins me here along with uh, Dick Valenciefen on the Middell football wrap-up. Okay, we talked about uh, – before we – uh, visit here with uh, Tanner, Hudeberg and Physical Therapy. They're making possible this show. And you talk about two really, really class operations with great history. You know, Andy, because you deal with them. Uh, the Hudeberg family is unreal. Uh, they've always been unreal to Middell. Um, Mr. Hudeberg went to Midwest City High School. Now, Mr. Hudeberg, and uh, I just call him. Uh, uh, I call him a foe, okay, (laughs) because David and I meet each other on the racquetball court quite frequently. Well, you tell him I said hi next time, and and, um, no comment on who I want to win on that that competition there. (laughs) Okay. Uh, He's he's a great guy. His family's great people, um, and and they're very big Middell supporters and always have been. And then PT Central does an awesome job. They take care of our our student athletes. They take care of our, our, our people. Okay. Very good. All right. Introduce this guy sitting uh, to to the left. And Tanner, move that microphone a little closer to your mouth. Thank you. There you go. And who we got sitting down there? To my left is Tanner Norman. Uh, Tanner is an offense defensive lineman from Carl Albert. As I said earlier, uh, before the break, um, big time rushing attack last night. And that starts up front. Tanner is a big part. Um, that leadership on that offensive line. He's a two year starter. Um, and as we talk about, and as they talk about it, Carl Albert, and we talk about it throughout the district, if you're going to win in November and December with weather in Oklahoma, you better be able to dominate the line of scrimmage. So it all starts with these guys. All right. Tanner, before the break, Mr. Collier here is talking about the offensive package. He's talking about all those big numbers by all the skill players. And I happen to look behind him. I see you got this grin on your face, and your eyebrows are peaked up a little bit because you know the real reason, right, that all that happened. And that would be you and the boys up front? Yes, sir. Uh, I was down in the trenches last night just went to work. We had that big running back behind us, and we just got to push almost every play. Midwest City knew it was coming and still couldn't stop it. We just ran it straight at them. Are you surprised when you reach a point in a game and, and you say, they know it's coming and they can't and they can't stop us. You go back into a huddle. What do you feel like when you knew they knew what was coming and they didn't stop you? Whatever. I mean, I just expect it honestly. The way we work, the way Coach Madden prepares us, we we work in the shoots, we're in shape, and we know our offensive game plan going into the game and we just want to run it at people and we know we're gonna get that movement. It's not a surprise to me whenever we just run it at them every every time. Yeah, I I think you guys have been known for that for years, back in the um, early 2000s even. I mean, it goes back to Gary Rose's regime and when Andy was playing at Midwest City High School. You guys have been outstanding running the football and great offensive line play. And and I will tell you, his offensive line coach, Clarence Madden, who used to be the head coach at Lawton, uh, Coach Will Shields. um, Oh, yeah. Clarence Madden's a Hall of Fame coach. Yeah, if you coached Will Shields – you know uh, what you're doing. Yeah, uh, yeah you know some. Uh, let's ask Tanner. Does Tanner know who Will Shields is? Tanner, do you know Will Shields? I don't think so. I don't think so. Tanner's defensive line coach is Jimmy Wilkerson, so he knows Jimmy Wilkerson. Okay. Tanner, Will Shields did not go to the University of Oklahoma or Oklahoma State. He was the best lineman in the state of Oklahoma, both his junior and senior year. He was in Lawton. Right? Yes. I, I forget which Lawton was. It just Lawton High. It was Lawton High. Lawton High. 
and he ended up at the arch enemy of the Sooners, Nebraska, and was an All-American in Nebraska and spent a few years beyond Nebraska, didn't he? Yeah. Th- 13, I believe, in the NFL. 13. He's an NFL Hall of Famer. I believe he so was a pro So that's who your bowler. coach was yeah. coaching, okay? That's who your coach helped mentor. That's right. Yeah, that's good. Aren't you glad you came on so you could be with the old guys and, and get a little history? <laughs> yes, sir. You go, you go through the classroom at Carl Albert this week. You go to history class, walk up to your history teacher. You say, I'm taking over the class today. I got some history for you. Yeah. And then you can tell everybody. Have a little fun with that. Okay. I do want to say one more thing about Tanner. Tanner is one of the best baseball players in the state of Oklahoma. He's really? A, he's a first baseman. Um, as you can see with stature, he can hit the ball a long way. But he's very quick, um, and he's a good athlete. And, and he's going he's gonna to play at the next level. But more important than that, just like his family, he's a good person. And he's good in school and does everything right. So that's why success happens when you have kids that do everything right. Well, uh you and now I, I missed you, but Tanner's dad and I, we we kind of brushed shoulders for a little, a little bit. bit. The first year, maybe the second too, I'm not sure, but for sure the first year as when I was the voice of Northeastern State so, in two thousand. So, yeah, so which his, was after you graduated and you went to the semifinals. That's right. You know, uh, Sean, Tanner's dad and I, we went to school starting at third grade. He played at Midwest City High really? School with me. And we played at Northeastern State together, um, and he was a year behind me. Um, so I graduated, decided to, I guess, get in the real world, which yeah, yeah. that's fun. Which he did. Um, and and that's when you started that, that following year. So, so that, Tanner's dad was a, a yeah. senior in college. Yeah, exactly. So we had a little bit of a get-together there. Um, what was the biggest surprise for you last night? You guys are down 19-7. What was the atmosphere on the sideline Tanner, when you were down 19, uh, 19-7? I mean, the O-line knew we were getting movement, and we we never lost doubt. We were watching the film on the sideline, and we knew what we were going to do, and we knew we were getting the ball coming out in that second half, and we were just going to run it at them. And we knew our defense was going to come in, get a stop, and we were just going to get that lead and run with it. You know, I'm giving I'm, – you know, this has become a history lesson for Tanner, right? Yeah. So, guys – both of you athletic directors, you just heard that very common comment by Tanner as if it was just, you know, another day at work, just another normal thing. Oh, on the sidelines, we were looking at the film, the video, whatever, and we knew things were better. Believe me, Tanner, when these two guys played, they weren't standing on the sidelines looking at video after after each play. No, but Isn't Brooksy, it amazing how it, things have changed? Technology is awesome, but, Brooksy, I, you're talking to two former principals. And I will tell you that this is a perfect example of how athletics is an extension of the classroom. These kids go and, and, and on the sidelines, they adjust. It's just like a history lesson. They can adjust. They can pick things up and move back or move on or move back. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's what he said was 100% truth. The adjustments in coaching is, is very important. When it was 19-7 to 7 at halftime, Carl Albert made adjustments. Absolutely. I mean, the best coaches can always come in and make adjustments, and we've talked about it in our football shows and our basketball pro- broadcast, John, where we talk about what do you think the coach has to do, and the great ones do make outstanding adjustments. The beautiful thing is the technology. Um, you guys probably were looking at iPads on the sidelines last night. Or huddle box. Uh, huddle box, and that's what we're all using now. It's unbelievable. High school football, you have the video going during the game, and it shoots down to the sidelines, and the coaches can go over the plays and look and review things with the players on iPads. So, yes, uh, Andy and I were not getting to use iPads no. during our day. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> they, they did. They thought, uh, Tanner, they actually, both of them, each once in their career did have to use an iPad. It was after an injury just above the right eye, and they had to that's use an, an iPad. iPad. <laughs> but that's the only iPads that they, that, that they ever used. <laughs> Tanner. <laughs> Let me ask you this. So how bad was it in the early part of the week last week getting ready for this game after that very bad taste in your mouth from that disappointing opening uh, game loss? Well, we came out Monday. We got to practice for about 30 minutes before the lightning started. So we go inside. We're still full pads. We're in the gym. We're still going. And then we know we're out of shape. We had people dropping like flies the first week. 
we had cramps going everywhere and coach cam got us right we go we go through his basketball workout after practice all sorts of running we're all we got guys throwing up we go home monday we come back tuesday we do the same thing we do it outside so we came out yesterday we were ready we were in shape we're going to keep working at it and get better shape every week this is a great story about uh, getting yourself back into shape is not i'll tell you what a pretty good admission on tanner's part although i guess it, after what you guys went through in, in trying to go through all that i guess you really were out of shape weren't you going in that game yeah you know and i, I think that and tanner you can you can say this I, I think another thing was we had so many guys the first week going both ways and tanner real quick just kind of explain how, how your position changed this week well i came in the first week I was starting nose guard and left tackle. We had this guy, number 77, his name Emerson Williams, and he just he's a hard worker and he stepped up. He started last night at nose guard. He's just a hard goer, took a lot off me. He clogged it up in the middle last night and I was able to go 100% on offense, not having to worry about defense. And that was a big part for me. And we had a couple other guys. We had a guy named AJ Mason. He stepped up to three tech. Didn't start the first week, came in the second week, ready to work. Clogged it up in the middle, too. Took pressure off our other guys to go on the offensive side. Are all of your guests for this series, 13 weeks, this is number two, we got 11 more, are all of them going to be as well-spoken as the, as the first two? Because you know who we had last week. Remind everybody again who we had last week. Your, your no, t- uh, oh, McCullough. Tango. Oh, Tango. Yeah, Tango, Tango. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, and, but he was so well-spoken. We've got the same situation but here. You're another, s- another future coach I'm listening to. But what you're going to see, and, and we pride ourselves after this, is you're going to see kids that give props to the rest of the team because it's a team game, the ultimate team game. And you're also going to see high IQs. And, and, and Dick, you'll say you'll, you'll be with me right like, you know, it, you can be a five-star athlete. And if I'm a three-star athlete, I can beat you if I'm high IQ and you're not. High IQ means everything. And if you work hard, if you're three-star. Right. Three and you guys are notorious over there at Carl Albert for being extremely hard workers. All right. Looking ahead, Tanner, what do, what do we got here from your from your standpoint for your team? Where, what What is the one thing, as nice as it was last night, what's the one thing that you look at from a player standpoint and you say, you know, we really – have to improve in this area a lot more well we can always get better at running the ball we ran it great last night but i think once we get that pass game going we're going to be hard to beat i think we threw the ball maybe four times last night but once we start spreading it out defenses aren't going to know how to stop us well you were able to run the ball and when you can run it you're not going to quit doing what you can do especially when you got dj on the other side exactly but there hey there are going to be nights when as well as you're playing on the other side they're playing just as well. Somebody's going to have to get the ball in the air. That's right. Okay. You want to be a coach one day, the way you're talking? Uh, actually, yeah, I would look forward to being a coach, honestly. I feel like I'm already – I kind of already play a role on the offensive line, helping everybody out. Coach Madden's a huge mentor. He kind of helps several of us, several of us starters, kind of have that coaching mindset. We see something scout team's doing wrong, we help them out. So – I think, yeah, in the future, coaching would be something I'd look forward to. He's hired. Dick, don't even say anything. It's mine. <laughs> yeah, I told you, if you don't hire the guy from last week, I'll get him if you do not. But I feel the same way about Tanner. Hey, isn't it great to have two uh, high school powerhouse uh, districts already trying to bid for your services, Tanner? Yeah. Huh? You, can, you can go back and tell, uh, tell all your buddies, hey, I got my first job offer. That's right. And I'm just a junior, right? Good. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, you you were great. I know your dad's been outside the studio here listening on 1340 The Game in the truck. So tell him I said hi again. It was I good, will. Good, good to see him. We'll take a quick break. We're back. Uh, Andy and uh, Dr. Ballin Seifen. I, I like to say that one time doctor. Each, each, doctor. Each, each show. You know, the, the doctor thing, you know, you know just yeah. – just because he knows I never call him in person that. Okay, so Dr. <laughs> Balancefin and Andy will be back in just a moment, and we'll talk some more as we head down the stretch of the second edition of the Middell Football Wrap-Up. Get the vehicle you're looking for and make it your own at Oklahoma's own Hudeburg. 
It's easy to shop for a new Chevy truck or SUV at Hudeberg Chevy, where we say, don't settle. If we don't have what you want in stock today, we'll order it on the spot. All with quick delivery and amazing incentives, like 0% financing. Shop HudeberGM.com today. You can count on Hudeberg, we'll give you more. Chevrolet, find new roads. Ready to get back in the game? Great news. The movement experts at Physical Therapy Central can help you find relief and results to keep you off the sidelines with over 30 convenient locations across Oklahoma City and beyond. Contact PT Central today at ptcentral.org to see a physical therapist. Physical Therapy Central, a proud sponsor of Middell Athletics and trusted choice for keeping athletes and fans in the game. Welcome back, everybody. Stretch run of the second edition of the Middale Football Wrap-Up. Andy Collier, Athletic Director from the Middale uh, School District to my left, and also joining us, our good friend from the Putnam City School District, Athletic Director uh, Dr. Dick Balancefin. Uh He and I will be along right after this show for the Metro PC uh, Football Review. Very quickly here, and the guys, a quick question for both of you before we wrap things up. Just a, a, a repeat of the 6A and 5A scores from the metro area, uh, except for this one. Bixby goes to Springdale, Arkansas, oh to Harbor, which is a powerhouse over there, and they blank them 59 to nothing. You think they it's, didn't get some more eyebrows up? Huh? It, it, they're at it again. Yeah. Oh, it's they're unbelievable. It's, it's a machine. Yeah, they are. Uh, more, 49 to 23 over Edmund North, southeast 65, Capitol Hill, nothing. Uh, Choctaw bounces back from that tough loss to Dale City. They win against uh, Edmund Santa Fe, 37 to 20. Jinx holds on to defeat Owasso, 14 to 7. Tulsa Union, uh, three touchdown win over Broken Arrow, 28 to 7. Again in 5A, uh, McGinnis, 46 to 14 over Clinton. Piedmont, 42 to 8 over El Reno. Uh, and of course, Carl Albert with the 39 to 25 win over Midwest City. Uh, very, very quickly, guys. Um, Official shortage. Uh, We didn't get a chance to talk about it on the first show. Dick wasn't able to be here with us in studio. Uh, Each of you about 60 seconds before we wrap things up. What are you doing to try to counter it? Uh, Andy. We've upped the pay, uh, and those guys and gals deserve it. Um, That's a very hard job um, in this day and age, especially when when there's so much passion from kids, coaches, as well as fans. Um, Sometimes they get the blunt of some frustration and we've upped the the price both dick and i i have done that as well as our partners and i think that's a big step in the right direction we want to definitely show uh, support to the men and women that are officiating our football games and all of our contests like mr Collier just said we've upped the pay we are also um, i'm serving on a committee where we are are looking at ways to recruit new officials and new get new people signed up. And we do have new officials for all our, our sports. So we're working with OSSAA. We're working with the, our referee commissioners, Andy and I, all of the ADs. We have relationships with the men and women that help hire officials for us. So we're doing our very best, and we're going to have our people try to work on um, good citizenship and not be all over the referees in ball games. And, and I, will, I will say this, piggybacking on that, you realize real quick how important those guys and gals are. Right. Andy, tell everybody how they can hear this show again. You had so much response. We had so much response from the opening one last week. We're going to solve the problem. How can you listen to this show again? Monday morning, this will be posted on the Middell Athletic website, uh, mid-dell.net, and go directly to the athletic page. Before we wrap things up, did you notice that – Dick actually called you Mr. Collier I love it. A, minute, a minute ago because he normally wants to come, you to come back and say thank you, Dr. Bell. I still haven't called him Dr. Bell. Okay, well, that's good. Uh, keep keep you, it that way. Andy. Thanks, guys. We've enjoyed it. We'll be with you next week. Coming up next will be the Metro PC Football Review. Join us again next Saturday at 8.30 right here on 1340 The Game for the Middale High School Football Wrap-Up presented by Physical Therapy Central. Look it out for all Middale athletes. By the Hudeberg Auto Group, a longtime friend to Middale Athletics. And by Rose State College, the next step after your Middale experience. <laughs>